make the best use of our time. First, thanks for coming today. My name is Dr. Bob Kamiri. I have my wife Debbie with me. We've been happily and passionately married last week for 33 years. Oh, we excited. Hallelujah. We got married at 12. Yeah. So I'm excited to be here today. This is going to be a life-changing short time period that we have with each other. Um, I know that it's on everybody's mind, including my own mind. I know my wife, because we've been passionate married for 33 years. It's always talking about weight. Seems like women can walk by in here and it's kind of like, you know, so I'm going to give you some really logical takeaway bullets that will make a difference in your life. Let me share a real true, honest to goodness story. Debbie and I woke up at 4.30 this morning. Actually, it was 4.25. We set our clock five minutes fast. Do you think that we like doing that? No, Dr. Bob, we don't. And so we have our own routine, but at 4 to 6, we jog and then we ride our bikes. We do that every day. If we did not do that, we wouldn't have to deal with cutting back calories somewhere. So we're always working on burning extra calories. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you jog one half hour or so every day for a week, it's like getting a day free. You're talking about 21, 2200 calories. So part of what we're going to talk about today is exercise. But I'm going to talk to you about physiology that maybe you never thought about before or heard about before. And the first nugget is, what is optimal weight? How do you know if you are having a health challenge or not? And that first bullet point that I gave you is all about your waist. If a gentleman has a waist 40 inches or greater, is a huge potential to have cardiovascular or heart disease issues. 40 inches or greater. Your goal, men, is 40 inches or less. Ladies, your goal should be 35 inches or less. Because if you have a waist greater than 35 inches, you have a greater chance to have heart challenges, diabetes. Now, I don't know if you, any of you want to become a diabetic or not, but you don't want to be putting an insulin needle in your buttocks. And you don't want to be checking your blood sugar three or four times a day. So, rough rule of thumb, you know, you can talk about BMIs, etc. Let's just focus a little bit on the inches. Okay, let's continue on because we have so many challenges we have to deal with today. What creates the reasons why people are overweight? There are ginormous reasons. I could go on from trans fat, I could go on with overeating, I could talk about sugar. We could talk about a lot of different items. I'm going to talk about some major important ones first. You get calories from carbohydrates and proteins. You get four calories from one gram. I mean, I'm just sorry, you get four calories per gram. That's exactly right. When you have a gram of fat, you get nine calories. So everybody's always concerned about avoiding fat. Can I tell you what? You can lose weight eating fat. See, the issue that you have with carbohydrates, carbohydrates, or let's say a breakfast pastry, will turn the machine on in the morning. What's the machine? It's caused that massive desire for more sweets all day long. You start to hold insulin. I'd rather have you eat a scrambled egg with some broccoli in it or cabbage or whatever you want, asparagus, anything, than to have a torpedo of death. Do you know what a torpedo of death is? It's a chocolate covered cream filled with clear sprinkles on it. But whatever you want to call it. It could be a depth charge of death. That's a donut. This is an oil filter. As a visual, the oil filter is the liver in your body. In a moment, we're going to talk about the liver. If your liver is congested, you're going to have more of a challenge losing weight. So we're going to talk about some of that physiology today. My wife and I have avocados every day. Avocados are fat. But avocados, like all, I don't want to say all fats. Fats will help the hormones in your body. A lot of the issues happen in people with a weight challenge because they don't have the right hormones for their thyroid gland and the other glands in the body. Because you don't want to be totally fat free. I have a young man that came into office in handcuffs and chains the other day because he was 12 years old. He decided to go on a fat free vegetarian diet. And I'm not saying you should or should not be a vegetarian, but he made that decision. Fat free vegetarian. He became bipolar. And for five years now, he suffered. And he was in the detention home. And that's why they brought him to office in chains in the handcuff. So I asked his mom, what happened? So you need fat for your brain. And it is, I can tell you that ADHD, and I wrote a book on ADHD, 
is directly related to the fat you're consuming. Eating too much, what creates the addictions? When should you not eat? Impulse eating. I'm not sure if you're aware or not, but there's a transmitter in the brain called serotonin. Serotonin is actually going to be sourced from protein in your body. We encourage our patients, I encourage my patients to eat chicken and turkey, especially chicken. Chicken is a great source of tryptophan. Tryptophan with B6 helps your body create neurotransmitters for your brain. One of them happens to be serotonin. Are you ready for this little nugget? If you don't have enough serotonin, you're going to be an impulse eater. What does that mean? Let's just say we have a plate of chocolate chip cookies, melted chocolate walnuts, steamy hot right now. A sugar sensitive person is salivating. A person who has normal serotonin can go into a room, look at that plate of chocolate chip cookies, and guess what? Walk away. But if you don't have enough serotonin in your brain, you're going to grab that. A lot of you have this desire to eat food. You need to make sure you're eating a variety of foods. Protein is important. I'd encourage you to go to my website. It's on the paper right there. We make a lot of chicken and meatballs in our home. We, we make a lot of turkey in our home, a lot of lamb in our home. We do not eat pork. I believe that you need to have a good variety of different proteins. If you are a vegetarian, bagels are not necessarily the best food to eat. You want to eat nuts and legumes. You want to have a variety of different types of items. Okay, let's talk about this liver. You will have a, a major problem losing weight if your liver is plugged up. Your liver is the main factory in your body. It's right here. How do you know if you have liver congestion? You're going to have hemorrhoids, spider veins, varicose veins, age spots, whatever that means. If you have varicose veins, hemorrhoids, or spider veins, and if you're a male, a man, and you have a larger abdomen, that abdomen is from a congested liver and fat or adipose tissue. Here's the vicious cycle. Once you have this tummy, and if you, especially if you're a female, but it can happen in the male also, this belly fat starts making estrogen. When you start having extra estrogen in your body, you're going to have a hard time to lose weight. Your liver processes that extra estrogen. So if your liver is busy processing estrogen, you're going to have a challenge to shed those extra pounds. We encourage milk thistle. I'm not sure if any of you have heard of milk thistle. It's a great herb for the liver. I personally take one milk thistle every day. I do it in a rotation. And I also take five drops of dandelion root every day. It helps my liver function optimally. I wrote down GB. GB stands for gallbladder. People who have had their gallbladders out usually have had major liver challenges. If you get your gallbladder out, it's very, very serious. We use a product called Colacol, which is bile salts, to help metabolize fats better. I want you to think of your gallbladder as your bottle of detergent in your body. If you lose your detergent, you have a greater chance to have challenges breaking down fat. If you had your gallbladder taken out, very serious, we encourage you to eat a half an apple every day. This is Dr. Bob's ABCs. At least a third cup of beets every day and four or five baby carrots. Dr. Bob's ABCs. It's good for the liver. I can't help anything about your gallbladder being taken out, but we use a product called Colacol, which is bile salts. Now, there's another item I want to share with you. So the first organ you want to make sure that it's functioning properly is the liver. The second organ in your body you want to have functioning properly is your thyroid gland. Your thyroid gland is a gas pedal to your body. If you have cold hands and cold feet, you're going to have challenges losing weight. Common body signals for a low thyroid is thinning on the outer part of your eyes, thinning hair, thin hair on top of your head, wide space T, morning headaches that go away as the day goes on, fatigue, constipation, and we'll talk about constipation in a moment, high cholesterol. Now what causes this thyroid to be functioning low? 
you don't have enough iodine. I personally take 12.